You know, I said in the last video that I wasn't going to be doing any full builds on here and instead be, you know, concentrating on the technical. And my thinking at that time was this video that you're watching right now. However, even though I've made hundreds of woodworking videos, this is a different animal. There's a lot of information here to keep track of, and I didn't do that. And then not to mention that part of the way through the measurements I was taking, I unplugged the laptop that I was using that doesn't have a battery. No fucking way. No fucking way. And lost everything that I had because I hadn't saved it. So this video is going to be more or less a summary of what I did, uh, what I tried, and what I settled on in the end. In case you're not familiar, I built these speakers about a year ago, and I talked about those actually in the last video. If you want to stop now and go and watch that, that's a good idea. But more or less, what I'm looking to do here is to improve them overall. I want to change the tweeter for a better one. I also want to redesign the crossover so that it's actually designed for the drivers that I have in the box. And I also need to refinish the box itself. When I built these last year, I kind of rushed it to get the video done. And now the last coat of urethane that I sprayed on is flaking off. So I'm gonna sand the boxes completely and spray on some new stuff. I'll also be changing the color. I'm gonna get a little bit technical about the tweeter and what I chose to do here. The one that I picked is a three quarter inch metal dome tweeter. It's a good tweeter. However, it likes to be crossed above 3K. That's 3000 Hertz. And I really wanted to cross it down lower to match up better to the woofer that I have here. Now I've got a couple of choices there. I can either use another tweeter, which I don't have. I'm using the stuff that I have on hand, or I can try to horn load it. And what that does is it boosts the response in the lower range. And then I can actually use that as my crossover point. It also allows me to use a very simple crossover on that driver. And that's just a single capacitor that forms a, a first order filter, it's called. And to drop the output so that it matches the woofer, I'm going to use an L-pad, which is just a pair of resistors, one wired in series and the other one wired in parallel. After I finish the measurements on the woofer and tweeter in the box, uh, and I'll be going into that in future videos, I think it's better to kind of segment those out uh, rather than put them in one longer video. You know, the information tends to get lost then. Uh, I took that and I used a free program called XSIM to design the crossover. And, you know, I've never used this program before, but as it turns out, I was really impressed with how accurately this nailed the crossover. Comparing the simulation to the final results, the actual measured results from the speaker, it's a perfect match. It's incredible how well this software works. And it's free, you can download it and use it. There's a link in the description. What I used for the measurements themselves was a program called REW, or Room Equalization Wizard. And the microphone, the measurement microphone I'm using is a mini DSP U-Mic 1. And this is a calibrated microphone that really doesn't cost a lot of money. The fact is, if you're going to get into building your own speakers and you want to actually do them properly, this is the way to go. You need a little bit of equipment. And you also need some parts to put together some uh, test crossovers. And then after you have that nailed, you can order new parts and build the finished crossovers with those. And that's exactly what I did here. And that's part of the reason why this project dragged on for as long as it did. So after I had them all reassembled and buttoned up, I tested them again. I measured the frequency response and I compared that to the simulation. And it was, like I said, bang on. I'm really impressed with how well this all works. It does take a long time. You have to do a lot of measurements. You have to make sure you don't unplug your laptop when you're taking the measurements and lose all your data and so on and so forth. Uh, but I think the results are worth it. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. I'm going to leave it off with a few of the actual graphs uh, showing the response and the projector response and the crossover circuit itself, the design that I came up with. I already talked about what I did with the tweeter. It's just a single cap first order filter 
plus the L pad. On the woofer, I went a little bit further. I added some baffle step correction. And what that does is it just lowers the output to the woofer up higher. So it almost seems like it boosts the bass, but of course there's nothing active here, so you can't really boost the bass. It just seems like it has more bass. I also use a second order filter on the woofer, which is just an inductor and a capacitor. And I also added what's known as a Zobel. And what this does is it uh, counteracts the rising impedance of the woofer and flattens out the impedance curve. So it gives the amplifier a more even load to drive. 